Hello, everyone. Welcome back. This is Heather. This is Alter the Podcast, and we're here with Tanya. Another day, another episode of sharing and exploring meditation, and particularly through the breath as we continue here in our our sutra exploration. We're going to um, continue together today with Sutra 4, but I'd love to bring Tanya on and just hear about, Tanya, what what breath has been like for you in the last week or so, if you've had something in particular stand out for you in relationship to your breath, whether it's been in your meditation practice or um, just what you've been noticing, what's been interesting for you in relationship to, to breath. Heather, I just love this investigation of breath. I love this inquiry into breath. I love this becoming acquainted with breath. I love Mm -hmm. how we are, we've been shown through Dr. Roche's work to familiarize ourselves with breath, something that we take so much for granted, something that we don't really focus on. We don't really, but we're just breathing unconsciously all day long. And, uh, and this, and to attend to breath as if it were a guest, I guess, Mm -hmm. is how I've been feeling my relationship with breath, especially, um, especially the way that Lauren teaches us about getting inquisitive, curious, engaging, Mm -hmm. befriending. Mm -hmm. Um, getting to know breath, I feel as if um, it is a mystery. It is this um, spontaneous um, action that the lungs take, that the body needs to sustain itself. So there's the physiological reality of breath that we need it to keep the systems going and this life um, continuing. And then there's the spiritual, the, even the romantic notion of breath, Mm. right? The intellectual, the spiritual, the, there's so many ways to absorb and and, and observe breath. Um, And for me, this, this week, since we started talking about breath um, last couple of weeks, and since we're still in the inquiry of breath, I feel as if, um, Gosh, I'm so grateful for it. Mm. And it's such a partner. It's such a partner. It's such a uh, uh, comrade. Mm. It's so present. And and we are probably here because of it. So it's kind of important too. (laughs) It's kind of important, you know, and we can choose to pay attention to it or not. I mean, that's the amazing thing, right? It's this autonomic process that's always happening and we can choose to bring some consciousness to it. And what can that gift us? You know, I've been, um, in a, in a breath work, we'll say certification, and I've been exploring all these different breathing techniques and what, um, Ah, what Western science says, what the yogis have said and trying to like pull these worlds together. And that's like very specific. It's a, it's a very specific part of my teaching. It's something I use consciously as a, just like we might use yoga poses or strengthening movements. There's a way to manipulate our health and our vitality through the conscious control of our breath. So that's like one aspect that I find that is very helpful and useful and very um, fascinated by that of how we can play with our chemistry and how we can get to know our diaphragm. And it's this very internal experience and very embodied experience with the breath. And what I also love about breath and what Lauren invites us and what the sutras invite us in is like to be in like, um, yeah, this, this soft and gentle and, uh, kind of at times playful relationship with the breath rather than saying, I'm going to take this tool, the tool of a certain breath counting exercise and bring it in and do that. You know, again, almost for me, it's like, I do it as a, um, or I teach it as like, you do this just like you would your bicep curls, you know, it's like a part of your, um, 
your weekly like health regimen, but to take the, the exploration of the breath into our meditation time and put no expectations on what that relationship is like. It's like, an, I, I've been utilizing it more as like an open, beautiful mm, doorway and just a, a, like more allowing, more embracing, more cherishing rather than having to be something specific. It's just that sense of savoring, savoring the feeling of air, this life force, this thing that I am made of, these substances, this invisible stuff that surrounded me, inviting that in and creating some sort of my own unique, maybe something I can't even explain connection with that. So I, you know, it's like, it's like separate a little bit for me and I need it to be separate. Cause if I take these like specific breathing techniques into my meditation, then I don't, I tend to not get into that space of restoration and rejuvenation because I'm being very um, regimented about it. It's like, for me, that sense of freedom, you know, allowing the meditation time, you know, my, okay, I want to be with my breath, but inside of what that's like is, is free, is, is more like poetic, is more um, expansive, kind of beyond just the, the physical chemistry and what the diaphragm is doing, like much more beyond that. Yeah. I love that you talk about that, but I also love that you bring the physiological aspect of it, that you're talking about mm. the chemistry, because it reminds me of when I was in, in college and we were studying this and mindful meditation, how um, when the body, when the mind senses danger, um, when we, you know, are faced with a saber toothed tiger or whatever calamity befalls us, how the system, um, the parasympathetic nervous system goes into fight or flight. Mm -hmm. um, and immediately the physiological outcome, the rollout of that is that breath starts to get very shallow. We're breathing faster. Um, the pulse is quickening. The heartbeat is quickening. And so each one of these actions in the body are feeding off of each other. And so um, a state of panic or stress um, is recorded in the system and hence we, we fight or we flight. Whereas, um, of course, we're not faced with saber-toothed tigers anymore <laughs> in, in, the, in the world and the lives that we live, but there are stressors and there are, um, you know, things that will trigger us. Um, and so the same responses do occur. We will experience the shortening of breath and the pulse quickening and so on and so forth. And I remember um, studying this, that if you are finding yourself in a moment of panic mm -hmm. or, um, you know, um, anxiety or um, stress that is affecting the way you're breathing, it's affecting because it, it distorts your ability to think clearly in that moment. Um, that's when you need to practice um, three deep breaths all the way into the navel, all the way into your seat. And like you said, you know, you can use your breath to manipulate and uh, the nervous system and signal the nervous system that it's okay. We can calm down. Uh, we can make a little space so that we take a decision with clarity as to what we're going to do under the circumstances, whatever the circumstances are that have created that stressful event. So I love that you reminded me of that because you're right. I mean, having studied this and been with Lauren and been doing this work, sometimes we go so far out into the mystical realm and the, the realm of the unseen, which is so incredibly seductive and alluring. Um, and yes, I, I almost want to talk about how the sutra talks about the sense of holding the breath. So we, we just mm. talked about how breath feels to us and what have we encountered in exploring breath. But I want to hear from you, what is this holding and, and, and the word mm. that Lauren has for this particular sutra is kumbhaka, the Sanskrit mm -hmm. word for cauldron or vessel or tender holding. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about how, what is that kind of holding? How do you mm -hmm. perceive it, interpret it and feel it? Mm -hmm. And how do you meditate with that holding? How mm -hmm. do you hold your breath when you're meditating? How does it become a doorway? 
mm. to a meditation for you? Mm. I love that question. And so one of the lines that I highlighted, um, in that Lauren shared about Kumbhaka is the sentence holding and embracing do not mean stopping the flow of movement. So this, for me, this reminder that there is always movement alter as a, as a, you know, a movement I call, we call our physical space a movement studio and a part of the, um, all of our offerings and kind of how I, I see the world or what I'm trying to like express out there in, in the world and kind of invite people into is this idea that, that life is movement and that we are movement. Life is movement and we are movement. So in a space of meditation to think that there's not going to be movement, like all of the time movement is just like silliness like that. It's just, it's not, it's not the very nature of life. And so again, this idea that holding and embracing the breath doesn't mean that there's constriction, right? We're not taking it and like pausing with it. It's like, we're, I know for me, like from when I'm going into that sort of we call it like, like a mudra, right? It's like this holding and taking it in and constricting. There's a lot of tension felt in my body. But if I allow on the opposite side of that, my belly to soften and my diaphragm on the inhale to, to move downward, it's like this, again, going back to what we explored a couple of weeks ago, this idea of the, the filling up with, the filling up with inside of this, like the emptiness we kind of, what I feel is like created when I let that belly soften and the diaphragm moves down. It's like with inside of that space, the breath is, is coming in. And there's just this, there's a, a, a second, a moment of quote unquote holding, but inside of that, there's all these inner processes happening. That breath coming in is just like sparking and fueling and electrifying all of, all of the rest of the living and the happenings that need, that are, that are going on inside. Um, so I tend to, and we were talking about this right before we started recording is as of late. And I think just in general, I'm very much of a, like a body person. I like the embodied experience of what embracing the breath or what it feels like in like really deeply in, inside of me. So, um, for me, I don't, I don't actually use the word holding. I think there's, there's more as of late, more of like a embracing, a welcoming, a cherishing, um, of like inviting in the environment, inviting in, inviting in that, which of the elements that is like feeding me. And, and like right now it's a lot of earth, like imagining that I'm just breathing in this powerful salt water <laughs> that I'm surrounded by. I live on this little island and and breathing that in and letting it do its own magic inside of me, knowing that it is is. Knowing that and believing and trusting that the air is like doing its its part to keep me healthy and vital and fueling every action I need to take the rest of the day and just saying like thank you. Thank you. A little moment of just gratitude that like I'm here within all of the challenges, within all the things and stuff that I don't actually want to be feeling, or I just want to be over like the breath is, is keeping me here. And I, and that's a part of it. And like, that's at times I sometimes don't feel okay with that, but I get to a point of like feeling okay with that. Cause like, what else is there? Mm. What else is there? Life is filled with all the fluctuations. I went way all over the place with that, but <laughs> that's where maybe that's the nature of breath too, right? It goes everywhere. Symbolic, like every little piece of us is, is fueled by every little tiny cell is, is touched by those molecules that we're breathing in. Mm. Mm. My favorite element uh, for a while now, I want to say, since I was in New York, um, earlier this year and even in the summer has been the element of air and mm. this, this suggestion in Sutra 4 that Lauren makes of 
um, holding the tender mystery, the kumbhaka. It's like a gentle vessel, but it's not a holding. And like you were explaining it so um, eloquently, I feel as if um, when you try to, when you um, say we could even practice this right now a little bit, you could just feel mm -hmm. your hands open and mm -hmm. move your fingers very gently as if you were caressing the air. Mm -hmm. The air was filling the space between your fingers and you moved your hand a little bit with a little more intention. You, you increased uh, the movement a little wider between your fingers as you moved your hands. You could feel the air even more. And it is, it's this breathing is this tender holding. It's there. It's, it's there. You know it's mm -hmm. there. You can feel it. And yet there's no holding. Mm -hmm. There's no grasping. There's no mm -hmm. clenching. It's just, uh, oh, you're here and I'm here too. Mm -hmm. And we are interwoven. We are interwoven. Woven. Mm -hmm. We are mm -hmm. interwoven. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it weaves through us. Breath weaves through us. Oxygen, air. Mm -hmm. And we can touch it and we can feel it, but there's really no holding. Right. There I'm is saying. actually no holding. I, I really appreciate that. Like to try, right? We can, we can try and it's actually, like you, you can't in, in a way, right? Yeah. It's like, I mean, even if you try on your, on your breathing, you can try to hold the breath in, but there you will get the cue to breathe out and the opposite, right? Like Absolutely. on either side of it, like that is the very nature of it. There is there, there is no, um, strong holding, maybe like, right, I think of it as like, like that soft poetic, the light touch, you know, the, the lightest, mm. most gentle, like, um, in the example, right. That Lauren speaks to, and I think he speaks to this often, whether it's the idea of holding a child or, or how you might hold a hummingbird or, um, your lover, you know, in bed, um, or just, a your lover as, as a hug or your, your most mm. um, beloved friend, you know, it's, it's that mm. tender touch. It's that like, oh, I'm, I'm so delighted to be here with you. Or I'm just in awe of this hummingbird that landed on my, on my hand. And what if to be like that with our, with this magical elixir that is here and fueling every part of life. I mean, just for, even just for like 10 seconds, like it doesn't have to be, that's like where you stay in your whole meditation. That's not, that's not what we're saying. That's not the expectation. There's no expectation, but just right now, like, oh, just this, this nothingness is everything. I love that. Yeah. This that's nothingness a good spot is to... everything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah. A, that's a good spot to, to close the sutra in. And I feel, yeah. yeah, an exploration of holding the air between your fingers or experiencing mm. breath like this mm -hmm. gentle lover that mm -hmm. you are, you know, dancing with, cascading mm. with, moving with, flowing with, and creating that relationship with breath yeah. and letting your, your mind wander with it. Let yourself go into it and see how, what, mm -hmm. where that exploration brings you, mm. how does it make you feel? What can you write about it? What can you share about it? Mm -hmm. What is mm -hmm. the taste, the essence of that in your body? In mm. your mind? Mm. Yes. Yeah. Wonderful invitation for the week. I think we leave people, community, all of you wonderful beings out there with that today. Yeah. Thank you so much, Tanya. That was beautiful. Fabulous. Like I feel, I feel gentler. I feel softer. Mm. I feel, I feel like, yeah, relaxed. That's very nice. Thank you. Thank you for that. I love that. Okay. Love. love thank you. Thank, thank you. you so thank much. you. Thank you everyone. We'll see you very soon next time. Mm. Big hug. Yes. All the love.